Hello, I have some big news. In January 2022, the details of a scientific breakthrough in astrology were published. Yes, you heard that correctly. A scientific breakthrough in astrology. Whoa, this changes everything. You can look at the Wikipedia article on astrology. It starts off by saying astrology is a pseudoscience. Great scientists like Neil deGrasse Tyson and many others just state very clearly astrology is a pseudoscience. We could debate that from now till kingdom come up until January 2022, but the whole conversation is now changed because extensive research done over the past 50 years has at long last finally been completely documented and presented and makes it clear that astrology is no longer a pseudoscience. So this book was published in January 2022. And this new information affects not only cynics of astrology and critics of astrology, it affects astrologers as well, because now we have this new branch of astrology that is fully documented as an evidence-based practice in January 2022. So this changes our understanding of what astrology is, no matter what area you're in, from people who are absolutely certain that astrology is nonsense to people who are professional astrologers. This is new information for all of us. And this book is the beginning of a revolution in astrology. And this revolution transforms an ancient belief system into a modern evidence-based practice. Okay, and who am I? I am David Cochran. I am the author of the book. I apologize if I sound brash or overly proud. I'm not the only one. My colleagues who are also involved in this research feel the same way about this book. Now, first thing, the title of the book is undoubtedly sounds hyperbolic, like, oh, give me a break, a scientific breakthrough. We And also, we've heard this before, this same old story. Some of you may be familiar with the work of Mikkel and Francoise Gauquin. They're perhaps the most famous of astrologers who attempted to revolutionize astrology with their statistical studies. And there are other astrologers, a fairly long line, or at least a, a good handful of astrologers who periodically appear and say, we have a science of astrology. Some of you may know about the Magi Society that published a series of books, and they claimed that they had developed a science of astrology. Well, maybe the Gawkulans did. Maybe the Magi Society really did. Again, we can debate that forever and ever, but scientists are not convinced by the research methods that were employed. They find flaws in what was presented by these different astrologers, and the status of astrology remains highly controversial. So claims of scientific advancement in astrology can become really tiresome, like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> you know, I've heard this record play a dozen times before, but this is different. There's something very different about this book, The Astrology of Bipolar Disorder, A Scientific Breakthrough. It sets it apart from all the other books. And the way that this book is distinguished from other books introduces a real massive paradigm shift for astrology. What is it that distinguishes this book and this information from other information that may sound similar? Three things. Number one, of course, it's not a book that's mired in anecdotal evidence gathered from famous people, clients, friends, and family. That's the typical way astrology is presented. That does not meet the scientific standards of the 20th and 21st century. It might be interesting. You know, it could be a groundwork for something, but it's not, it's not rigorous and doesn't validate anything strongly. So this book does not do that. 
This book is also not a bunch of dry statistics. It's not, you know, oh, we ran this hypothesis test and we got this t-test result and uh, and these certain p-values, etc., and just a bunch of dry data. And also, it's not exaggerated claims based on scanty evidence. That's the big one. There were problems with the other research projects. Sometimes they ran out of data. It couldn't be duplicated. The effect sizes were very small. There's a lot of issues. The way the data is collected, debates go on and on and on. What I'm telling you is that in this book, we're presenting an accumulation of 50 years of research that has never been clearly documented. Here it is, the whole story from beginning to end in this book. And we explain how we use the analytical tools of astrology, and we sharpen them. We sharpen the concepts of astrology from being like a soft butter knife to a laser beam that cuts right through to the essence of a person. So we're synthesizing ancient wisdom with a wide array of cutting edge modern research methods. So what this book does is it takes us on a journey of discovery where we're not using just simple quantitative studies. We use a wide range of research studies beginning with interviews. Well, interviews are very subjective. They're not going to give rock solid evidence that astrology really works, but it sets the groundwork. These interviews began in the 1970s. In 1972, they began. And then I went on and I developed software on a mainframe computer because obviously this was before laptop computers. And we developed the software to produce huge amounts of information that would take days or weeks or months to calculate by hand and analyzed astrology from many different points of view, Vedic astrology, harmonic astrology, what's called cosmobiology huge amounts of data and long interviews, two hours long, questioning, interrogating, exploring possibilities with no assumption that astrology works or does not work. And through this interview process, began to build some ideas, some hints, some guesses. This was actually a necessary part of the research, jumping right into a quantitative study, assuming that the ancient literature and the traditions and the things we learn actually work is invariably going to fail. So what we're presenting in this book is a massive undertaking over 50 years that gradually, step by step and stone by stone, builds a solid foundation for astrology. In addition to the interview process and the software that generates huge amounts of data that we can look at and test and question and investigate, we develop data visualization tools, graphs. For example, I developed software that produces a graph for if you're becoming more accident prone or becoming less accident prone. If you are a research scientist, you know the power of data visualization. You know that at uh, research conferences, data visualization is a hot topic. Ways to probe what's going on, to visualize it, to understand it. So what we've done over these many decades of investigation is probe, analyze, view, understand. So again, this is not just a bunch of data put through a machine based on a lot of assumptions. And then these graphs, we added statistical rigor to it. So we get what's called the, the Pearson correlation coefficient for certain kinds of data where we have measurable results. We spent a little over one year analyzing baseball batting performance with extremely detailed information that's available on a website and gold prices. So we use this data visualization to understand, to get insights, to get hints, 
to explore possibilities, and also to more rigorously test the ideas. What I'm saying is that there has been a huge amount of work developed over many decades to build the theory, to evaluate it, to test it, and to perfect it with a large variety of research methods. Now, I have a master's degree in research and evaluation and uh, research evaluation methodology from the University of Florida. And I love research methods. In addition to having a master's degree, you know, I was a co-author of an, an academic uh, article, you know, in a, in a peer-reviewed prestigious journal. I've gone to research conference uh, uh, conferences. I've spoke at one of them. I continue to study, read, develop, pursue this. I, I just love it. And in this research that I did with a colleague, Giselle Terry. Giselle Terry is a marriage and family therapist in Los Angeles, California. And she has 25 clients with various kinds of severe mental and emotional illness. And she has birth data for them. And we did case study analysis, again, deeply investigating what's going on. And in my exploration of bipolar disorder, I looked at how genetics research is done on bipolar disorder and found out that they are using research methods that are extremely similar to the methods I have been using for investigating astrology. It's very exciting, very interesting and fascinating. All of that is explained in this book. So Giselle and I, conducted this research on bipolar disorder in four phases, and each phase of the research built upon the previous phase. And all of this research, these four phases, are built on the decades of previous research that I had done in astrology, and all of the concepts, and this big model that was built for how astrology works. So what I'm explaining is that this is a very thorough, comprehensive research project involving many different approaches to understanding astrology. So, bottom line is, this book is unique. There is nothing you can compare this book to. And also, to make this clear, the astrological techniques that are used to understand the astrological foundations of bipolar disorder are very different and radically new from ideas used in the past. So if people say, oh, we've tested astrology, or we had 20 astrologers and they could not match the birth chart with the people, and this research in astrology failed, and that research in astrology failed, fine. We're not using those ideas. <laughs> we developed from various astrological traditions a very new kind of analysis. The variables, the astrological variables, are very, very new. So this is a, a new theoretical system tested and evaluated in numerous ways and builds a body of literature. And that's what we explain in this book, the body of literature that has been developed to understand how astrology works and our most exhaustive and comprehensive project was on the bipolar disorder. So, to tell you a little bit more about the background, uh, in addition to having studied many areas of astrology, having consulted people, I have been involved in areas of psychology and counseling. When I graduated from high school, my goal was to be a guidance counselor, like, you know, probably in a high school. And so I've had a long interest in consulting people, understanding people. I am also, as many of you know, a developer of astrology software, and I work with the technical details of astronomy. I've used spherical trigonometry to solve various problems in astrology and questions. And as I've just explained, I have a passion for research methods, and part of that passion led to a master's degree. I collaborated 
with Giselle Terry, without the collaboration of both of us, this breakthrough would not have happened. Giselle's deep involvement as an extremely busy marriage and family therapist and her expertise and the combination of our different talents made possible this breakthrough. Now, when I present the, these developments in this area of astrology that we call vibrational astrology with a new set of rules and the research methods and the model that we have for it and the theoretical framework that's employed. And when I have an opportunity to share it with this information with people outside of astrology, such as professors in areas like psychology and physics, overall, the result has been very positive, sometimes surprisingly positive. I've given lectures to astronomers, for example, and at first they're rather hostile and dismissive. By the end of the lecture, they are very respectful, very appreciative, and we are on the same page. We have the same priorities of academic rigor, of questioning, of doubting, of finding out what the truth is, and that this massive amount of work has turned up something very exciting that somewhere in the thousands of years of traditions of, of astrological thinking, there are some variables at work. And these variables could not be found without the high accuracy calculations that are available today. They were not available even 50 years ago, let alone in ancient times. It would not be possible with the high-speed computers, the databases. So much that is available now that was never available before and combining expertise in many areas and 50 years of commitment, non-stop work on this, makes the breakthrough and collaboration with many, many people. I'm telling you that a breakthrough has happened. This has been going on quietly behind the scenes by a bunch of nerdy people who are, you know, at their computers and analyzing their charts, not making a lot of noise about it, but it's building. There's a growing group of people involved in vibrational astrology, involved in the research. There's an annual vibrational astrology conference. This is a powerful new movement. It's growing and expanding. And this book is the key a brick in the building, you could say, that's, that is going to expedite this whole process. This revolution is now fully underway. So I invite if you, if you're a scientist or a skeptic of astrology or just completely cynical of astrology, if you're an interviewer, a podcast or a commentator, or a news reporter, let's discuss it. Let's debate it. It doesn't matter what your attitude is. Maybe you're antagonistic and dismissive of astrology. Maybe you're neutral and open. Maybe you already have a, a sense that astrology does work in some form. It, it's okay, whatever, wherever you're coming from. I'm ready to debate this or discuss it or whatever venue. It doesn't matter. Let's interface this new information. Let's evaluate it. Let's be open. Let's be scientific. Let's look at it honestly, openly, candidly, and maybe with some humility, not to assume that we know things we haven't looked at yet. I'm ready to learn. Are you ready to learn? Let's put this front and center. It's going to happen anyway. Vibrational astrology is not going away. This new, solidly supported, evidence-based vibrational astrology it's here to stay. It's only going to grow. It cannot be denied. So you're getting, if you're listening to this shortly after January 2022, you're getting this early within a few years. Many, many more tens or hundreds of thousands of people are going to become aware of this new movement, this revolution in astrology. I know it sounds crazy to a lot of you. I know it sounds unbelievable. How could this be? 
Look at how many things seemed un unbelievable in the past, whether it was the discovery of electricity and then radios and televisions and computers and rockets going into outer space. Every massive breakthrough sounds unbelievable at first. And that's what we're looking at here. The revolution has begun and every revolution has long history to it. This was not born out of my work you know, with no foundation to it. There's a long, long history. It's just a matter of drawing upon the right traditions, being lucky enough to assemble the right things, having that commitment, excitement, enthusiasm, dedication, a team of people with skills, and boom, you could say the ice cracks, the, the breakthrough is made, and it has been made, believe it or not, in astrology. So it's taken the form of this book. Now the book, it's published by Cosmic Pattern Software in Gainesville, Florida, in the USA. And uh, right now it's available at a reasonable shipping charge for people in the United States. By around March, I'm making this video in early February 2022, within a month or so, we'll have it available through popular book outlets like Amazon, and then the shipping fees will be more reasonable. But if you want to get the book now, um, you can go to my website, astrologydc.com. Let me bring that up. So here's astrologydc.com. This is where I add all of the latest discoveries, the new videos and information as they're coming out uh, every week. I, we have a monthly meeting. It's a subscription website. But I also put on this opening website page right here, this button, Buy Book, The Astrology of Bipolar Disorder, The Scientific Breakthrough. And if you click on this button, it'll open up another tab. If you're using a, you know, a browser on a, on a computer, and then you'll see the information about it and you can click on Add to Cart and pay for it with a credit card or, or PayPal. So uh, what else did I want to say? I think there was one more thing. Uh, OK, well, I guess that's it. Um, I guess I just wanted to repeat that, uh, you know, if you're not in the United States by March, maybe April, we will have uh, published it as well through the print on demand services. And that will make it available through Amazon.com and and other uh, you know, uh, book retailers. Okay, my friends, there you have it. The exciting, amazing <laughs> news that there is now, again, believe it or not, a new form of evidence-based astrology on the same level as fields like psychology and sociology and other what you could call soft sciences, astrology in the form of vibrational astrology is now on par, is now on equal footing with areas like sociology and psychology. We have a solid evidence-based system and it is developing and growing and improving rapidly. Thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Take care. Namaste.